Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is a Sony Stereo Power Amplifier XM55, I think is what that says. Yeah, that's just a marketing gimmick. Anyways, um, this thing is so old that it even has these DIN connectors on it. So, this thing is vintage. Now, I've never worked on one of these. I've never seen one of these. I don't know much about it. But at least it has the wiring diagram where everything goes. Judging by the way things look on the sides, it's probably a chip amp or a very early transistor amplifier. I suppose we shall see. It's very heavy for what it is anyways. Don't know what to expect yet. Looks like it kind of got trashed a little bit, especially in the corners. All right. Grab you, put you over there and out of the way. Mm. It doesn't seem fun. Oh, crap. So it has this stupid... Okay, well, I got to take the screws off from back here, which hopefully won't be too bad. Hopefully this will be another simple repair like all the other ones were. I like simple repairs. Because the thing about simple repairs... I can get a lot more done and get them out the door without needing to go hog wild and spend all day on a single amplifier replacing like 40 transistors and rebuilding half the driver stage. Because yeah, as much as I do that, I don't like doing that. So wow, yeah, it's a chip amp. It's a very, very early interesting it's got that stupid hydroscopic glue ha 1396 oh yeah she is vintage matching transformer yeah she's vintage is vintage can be yeah that doesn't look good See that all broken away from there? Yeah. It's probably my issue. Won't it be something silly like that? I bet it is. Wouldn't that be something? Okay. Yeah, this is just a little tiny little amplifier that's a very early chip amp, which means this thing runs straight off of 12 volts. Which also means this thing's not going to put out a lot of power. Because this thing looks like it was designed for head units that were very, very low power. This was like a booster amplifier from the old days with two knob radios. Yeah. So I want to say 1981, maybe? Because that would be about right for something like this. 1981. Yeah, it's very early. Yeah, I'll have to take a closer look, but... Yep. Alright, well... Let's figure out what I want to do next. Do I just want to leave it at that? Or do I want to attempt to hook up the remote circuit and power this thing up maybe so I'm trying to think how this is done this must be what is this are these speakers crap well let's see speaker left speaker right speakers gray so those are definitely speakers 
Booster input. Yeah, that's right. This is a booster. So that's a high level input. So that's what this is designed for. This is designed for... What is it? Orange. It doesn't label orange. But it's there. Oh, yeah. It says yellow. That is not yellow. That's orange. That's yellow. That's orange. No, that is... No, I don't know what that is, but that's... Anyway, so yeah, this is designed for a like a 5 watt or 10 watt two knob radio to give it a little bit more power. That's it. And it's got some equalization in there. So yeah, let's get the power hooked up and see what we got. All right, I have power connected and everything is on. Idle current seems a little high for something that's not got a transformer in it, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Now, before I just start connecting my speakers to that, I want to monitor, I want to look at the DC offset at the speaker jacks, which this is not a split rail amp, so there shouldn't be any DC unless something is wrong, like if one of the, because there's output filter capacitors in here, so unless one of them's bad. So anyways, let's go ahead and check that right now. Mmm. 0.9 volt. Let's check the orange one. Nothing. Okay. Not terrible. But that could be a leaky... Anyways. That could be a leaky coupling capacitor somewhere. Um, anyway, so let's see. Let's check the one that's 0.9 volts. I got sound on that one. Let's check this one. This is so hard to do with one hand. Nothing. So one of these is bad or we've got dirty controls. So you know what? Just just to give this thing a benefit of the doubt. I want to spray out these controls here because it's gotten me so many times. I'm going to spray these guys out and see if it if anything improves. If not, then one of these two amps is bad. Or the coupling cap to it is bad. Because I shouldn't have a DC offset like that. Not with a coupling capacitor. So, something's up with that. Alright, so cleaning the controls did bring this channel back. And if I pause it. It's very weak and distorted. Well, it's not really distorted. It's weak. It's a lot weaker than the other channel. I don't know if you can hear it. Probably not. But, um... It's kind of distorted. But, and it's, and it's probably not going to translate well on the camera, but... I'm trying to figure out why it was cracking and popping, popping a little bit. And it's weaker. So I've been using my up, can of upside down air. Now watch this. If I spray the amplifier I see, hear it get muffled, we're losing the high frequency response. Hear that? That chip is bad. That chip is... It's not good because I'm pretty sure the other channel doesn't do that because if I go to the other channel first off I'll unwrap all this just unwrap all of that for right now <sighs> Goddamn wires now if I if I do this one, it's hard to do this on camera. I really need to get the right setup because this is just annoying me. I'm sure this is annoying my viewers too. Hear the difference? Yeah, so let me hook this channel up and try something. 
Yeah, much, much better high frequency response. And see if this chip does the same thing. No. It does not. This chip is bad. The HA1396 is defective. We're gonna have to get another one. It's not these, because I've already sprayed the preamp boards here. And this is just like, that's low pass, all pass, high pass. They call it that, but that's really what it is. So if I go into low pass mode, you see what I mean? Yeah, come on. That's cranked all the way up. It's a lot louder. The camera's probably... The camera's probably compensating a lot for it, but... Just leave it right there for now. Um, so this channel's working fine. This one, that chip is bad or one of its associated capacitors is leaky. And I don't mean physically leaky, I mean electrically leaky. Because remember we had a DC offset on one channel but not the other. Which channel's working? The right channel. So yeah. This is the right channel. Yep, that's the right channel which is this side. So yeah, we got a problem here with this chip. This chip's even getting warmer than this one. Yeah, this, this, wow. This is cool. That sucker's warm. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a problem. So definitely we're gonna have to order a new chip. Probably a pair of new chips. Debating whether I need to get new caps or not, but more importantly, we need to find out what this thing's actually worth. Because I don't want to stick a hundred dollars of time and parts and all that stuff in this thing when it's only worth twenty. You know what I mean? So yeah. Alright, see now we're back on the bad channel. Hear that? That's not good. That chip is definitely bad. All right, so let me pause this and I'll move it back to the good channel. This is the good channel. Now we're back on the good channel. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big difference. So this side's working fine, that side's shot, so. Yeah, we have a bad um, IC over here. Um, unfortunately, I can't find a data sheet on this, nor can I find the service manual on this digitally anyway. So um, these were probably made specifically for this um, design. But one thing I will say is the power output is surprising to me because this is only running on 12 volts. So there's not... Yeah, this thing is actually impressive for what it is. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, I've got to source new chips and then replace it. But first, I need to figure out if there's any value in this thing, if it's worth doing so. So, anyways, we'll be back once I get that confirmation and we get the parts. They're, they've been long since EOL, so I'm going to have to get them from the old school supply chain you know so it is what it is all right so after a rather unusual behavior of that output ic i did some searching around and they finally came in i actually have new old stock output ic's and there was two of them so i went ahead and bought both of them this one is actually designed for the xm55 along with a few other models that this is compatible with. So there we go. We actually have both uh, output ICs. So just because I have both of them, I think what I'm going to do is just change out both of them because why not? 
because I have them both, I might as well fix it, right? So we're going to change out both of those ICs and we're going to check performance again. Um, now, the capacitors on this thing are debatable because this was made early enough that it was kind of just before the leaky capacitor era. This is 86, I think. 85, 86, somewhere in there. Um, I don't know if there's something on this or not. No, it doesn't say, but yeah, so we're, we're somewhere in that ballpark. We're going to just go ahead and replace both ICs, and we'll just do that for now and see what results we get. Hopefully, it fixes it. Now that I have the board out, I do find it interesting. It looks like these chips have been reworked before with the uh, flux on the solder joints, but now the rest of them really kind of have that look to it. Huh. The things that make you go, hmm. But I figured while I'm in here, when I pull these chips, I might as well inspect all the rest of the solder joints and see kind of what's up to make sure everything is kosher. Alright, so, weird design, but the new IC, or the old ICs are removed. And the heatsink only goes here and not over where the die is. Kind of weird, but okay. So I went ahead and replaced those two. I got the new ones installed and I got some nice new thermal compound in place. Um, like I said, the dies don't really touch the heatsink, just the tabs, which I don't know. That just seems kind of like a design flaw to me. But anyways, um, so that's all replaced now. So at this point, I think I just need to hook it up and see if the performance actually improved. It should, but we will see for sure. Wow, that sounds far, far better than what we had before. Much, much better. have it that is one successfully repaired sony xm 55 so she's ready to go on to its next life wherever that might be not entirely certain but i think we're ready to go doesn't have a whole lot of power but hey you know for what it is it works pretty good so anyways if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all that fun stuff if you have a comment please feel free to leave one until next time, guys, thank you for watching.